So Kwame Kilpatrick, our former mayor, got his 28-year sentence commuted. So he is only going to have served just a little over, over seven. You know, I have been really interested in how reactive uh, Detroiters are uh, to this news. He hasn't been mayor here for more than a decade, uh, but, but lots of people still feel really invested in him and the time that he spent uh, as, as, as mayor. Uh, and and they, they feel really strongly about uh, him, him getting this commutation. Karen, uh, you worked with the former mayor. I'm going to start with you. Well, you know, and, and I've said this before, I said it in an op-ed piece in the news, um, you know, even people that did not like, support, um, you know, Kwame Kilpatrick, many of them thought 28 years was excessive. So, you know, seven years, he's out. I mean, I think it's time for, you know, people to move on, but it is something that people like to rally behind. Uh, you said, you know, you were, you know, shocked at, you know, just the the, the, the interest and the, and the fever with which people are interested in Detroit. It takes me back from people that have nothing to do with Detroit, people that don't like the city, people have never been here, they don't have a vested interest, and they are hell bent on having this really aggressive position on, you know, what they thought. Mm -hmm. Stephen, you and I've talked about it before, is that he had conveniently become the poster child for all of Detroit's challenges, which was inaccurate and unfair. Um, you did an exhaustive piece for the Free Press that really outlined all the contributing factors um, to, to put Detroit not only where it was, but sadly where it continues to remain today. So I think people, before they take a side for better or worse, should arm themselves with as much accurate and factual information as possible. Mm. Uh, Carrie Jackson, what do you think about uh, the idea of the former mayor getting out and maybe coming back to Detroit? Well, A, Karen knows good and well that the people are not going to take the time to get as much factual information as possible. That That's wishful thinking. Um, the, the, the angle that nobody's really talked about is it was a commutation, it's not a pardon. And mm -hmm. the, 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 the thing that, that has apparently just missed everybody's radar are the conditions that comes with that commutation. What's going to happen? It's a setup. It was a clear setup. Mm -hmm. And what's going to happen if he fails any of those conditions? It's going to cause, you know, calamity and a lot more trouble down the road. But I don't, I, I'm hoping that he's successful. So, so uh, Gary, talk just a little bit about what those conditions look like. That's an important legal distinction. The, the he, 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 he's got to go report. He's to follow a lot of rules. Otherwise, he could go back. He could go back to prison. Right? Go back to prison, and he's got twenty more years hanging over his head, and he's got to pay back four point seven million dollars. <laughs> that uh, that's outlined. Man doesn't have four. I, I don't know if he's got four point seven million somewhere stashed, but. He, that, that's a ridiculous amount of money to have hanging over a prisoner's head. Greg yeah, Bowen, just... uh, you and I are about the same age as uh, Kwame Kilpatrick. Uh, we grew up in the city about the same time. Uh, you know, he came to symbolize so much of uh, the promise that our generation had, especially for African-American uh, boys and men who grew up in the city at that time. But what do you think he means to us now? I think that uh, I think that he means that miracles still happen. I think you know he was a brother that was going to be locked up for 28 years, and that's a long time. And yet, through the most unlikeliest of allies and Donald Trump, who I think is no friend to the black community, you know, became the vehicle for him getting out of jail and being reunited with his family. Now that's a miracle. I don't care where you stand or how you look at it. You know whether or not you're thinking it was too much time or not enough time, but but it's that 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 commutation was proof positive that miracles can happen and they happen to him and they can happen to you. So I, I see that, but also on the other hand, there's this idea that somehow we need to pass judgment on uh, on the on the act itself and Kwame and what he means uh, uh, to us. I don't live in Georgia, but I care that John Ossoff won, you know, becoming a U.S. senator. Uh, I care about what happened when that brother who had ran for governor and then got caught up in the drugs and all that stuff. I mean, I mean, these national images, these national figures that we have on the national stage mean a lot to us. And I think that we need to be mindful of that in their position on the national stage. What Mr. Kilpatrick does next 
uh, with his life, should we even have the opportunity to see? He may just, you know, go on and live his life and love and, 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 and continue on in obscurity. Uh, it, but whatever he does, it will remain a lesson and something worth watching. Brandon Bryce, uh, quickly, your, your, your thoughts. This was probably one of the testaments to uh, 45's pr criminal justice reform in the sense that it took a Republican like Donald Trump to let out uh, Kwame Kilpatrick. But, but this speaks to a much bigger issue, uh, Steve, not just about prison reform, but the fact that, I mean, there are serial killers that don't get 28 years. And the fact that this sentence was so harsh, I think people across the board said, okay, you know, did he need to do some kind of time? Absolutely, for his crimes, but it was a little, it was a bit too much. And I think this also speaks to the double standard that we're seeing in, I mean, if some could question that there are situations, even in some of our own government right now, where folks are doing some of the same things and the media slaps them on the wrist. And so I think this speaks to the double standard. When we talk about the media and African-American leadership, are they held to the same standards or not? And so I think that, you know, I'm glad that Kwame's out. Uh, I think the next, and, and I think it's important what was mentioned earlier about the fact that, let's be clear, this was not a pardon. This was a commutation where now, you know, to see where what's the next life for Kwame Kilpatrick. Is it going to be back in politics? Is it going to be some kind of advisor? We don't know, but I find it ironic that he's released literally the year before the upcoming mayoral election. Yeah. Well, he's ineligible to run uh, in that mayoral election. But he's got influence. He could run, he could run for Congress uh, in the 2022 uh, election. Day. And he can file to run in Georgia or Texas or anywhere else that he wants to file to run. And his deputy mayor is now running and for an office. 